be here. Thank God. You know, this is God, God's house. Amen. You know, and we ought to be here to support it. Thank God if we're able to be here. Amen. It's not just, I think that a lot of this COVID's hurt a lot of people. And everybody just thinks they can just go and do what they want to do. But you know what? we got to do it the old-fashioned way. Amen. Amen. The way God said that in the beginning. Amen. Amen. Tonight, I'd like to start off, thank God. And like I said, I'm, I'm going to do a lot of reading here this evening. But everything that I'm going to talk about, it's going to explain itself. And uh, I'd like to start off First Peter chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 3 through 6. And I'll take my time. I want everybody to get with me. If, if, if you don't pay attention, if you don't read along with me, you'll get lost because the, what we're going to do is we're going to try to open up something to, to you tonight. Just like I said, tonight's our Bible study. Try to slow down. It's important, thank God, that we feed the church and we give people the knowledge of the Word of God so that they can grow. But in 1 Peter 2, in chapter, verse 3, he said, If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. How many tastes of the Lord think he's gracious? Okay. To whom coming as unto a what? A living stone. I want you to keep that in mind. Disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Now listen, he said, ye also are what? Lively stones. He's a living stone. We're lively stones. Now listen. And are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices accepted to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth in him shall not be confounded. And what I'd like to say where we're going to go here tonight is just like the Lord, he's the chief cornerstone. He's the living stone. And we're a bunch of little stones, and we're built upon that one big thing. And that, then all of them stones come together, they make up a great mount, thank God. Mm -hmm. All right, go with me tonight, thank God, to book of Isaiah, chapter 2. I want to read 1, 2, and 3. Amen. The mount of the Lord. Amen. It takes a lot of, takes a lot of rocks to build a mount. All right. Verse 1. And the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the what? Last days. The last days that the what? Mountain. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. And shall ex be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. In other words, God's mountain, it's going to be established. It's going to outlast every mountain. It's going to overcome everything. I mean, I want to be in that church, don't you? And he said, and many people shall go in, go and say, come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So God's mountain, thank God, it's going to be established in the last days. You know, God said he's going to set up a kingdom that was never going to fall. Thank God. That church, the church is that kingdom. You know, he said, I'm the vine and you are the branches. In John 5, verse chapter 15, he said, I'm the vine and you are the branches. But if we don't abide in the vine, we can't live. We can't survive. Y'all go with me tonight to the book of Micah, chapter 4. This is a witness to what we just read. The Bible said, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Micah chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Amen. It's pretty much the same thing we just read in Isaiah. Amen. Would you read along with me? God's mountain, the mountain of the house of the Lord. This is way back. Isaiah was 700 years or so before Christ. But he was prophesying about this latter time. But in the last days, verse 1, But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. Oh, he's going to be on top. And it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow into it. 
And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the, house, to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. How many say amen? amen? All right, turn over to the sixth chapter, right there in Micah. We'll see what he's talking about when he's talking about the mountain. Said he'd be exalt, exalted above the hills and above the mountains. But at the six, at six, Micah 6 and 1 and 2, he said, Hear ye now what the Lord saith. And he will, let me see, hear what the Lord saith. The rise, he tells Isaac, Micah, he said, he said, Contend thou before the mountains. Now, as we're going to read here, it's talking about people. Amen. And let the hills. Hear thy voice. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with who? His people. And he will plead with Israel. God's mountain, thank God, it's going to be established. It's talking about his people. God's going to have a great church. He's going to have a great thing. But we're just going to find, we're reading about it in prophecy. Go with me to Daniel. Chapter 2 tonight. Probably a lot of you have read these scriptures before. But we want to get right out of it. Thank God what it's, what it's got here. Daniel chapter 2. I'm going to be reading 31 through 35. And then I'm going to read verse 44 and 45. Everybody with me? Daniel chapter 2. And he's telling about a dream. The old king Nebuchadnezzar, he's telling about a dream that he had. And he said, Thou, O king, saw us, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, and stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. And the heads, and the image's head was of fine gold, and his breast and his arms of silver, and his belly of his thighs of brass, and his legs of iron, and the feet part iron, and part clay. And he said, And thou sawest this image, until that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon the feet that were of iron and clay, and break them in pieces. And he said, then was the arm, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken into pieces together and became like the chaff on the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone, now listen, I want you to see that. The, and the stone that smote the image became a what? Great mountain. A great mountain. And what did it do? And it filled all the earth. Thank God. Now, who was that stone? Remember that song we sang? And they said, oh, Daniel saw that stone come and roll down the mountain. It had smote the old image on the feet. All the kingdoms of the world. He smote it on the feet and it, it fall down. Thank God. God, and from there, he said, that stone, which was Christ, it's, it's going to become a great mountain. He's talking about the church. Listen now. Let's go down and let's read the interpretation. We can, you can read this whole chapter later. But down to verse 44, this is the interpretation of the dream. And he said, In the days of these kings, it's talking about the image, shall the God of heaven do what? Set up a kingdom. Set up a kingdom. How many is in that kingdom tonight? Amen. Amen. Set up a kingdom which shall what? Never, Never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand for how long? Forever. forever. And for as much, listen now, for as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and the, the small stone, and that it break in pieces the iron and the brass and the clay and the silver and the gold. Let's talk about all the kingdoms. And the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter? And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. 
What he was showing Nebuchadnezzar, he showed him a great image, which was all the kingdoms of the world and how Christ was going to come. He was going to tear down all them kingdoms. Say, God, how many's glad when he came in your life and tore down all the kingdoms that had rule over you and all the things that had power over you? Thank God. Now he said, whom the Son said, free, he's free indeed. Thank God. But then we're going to go on and read a little bit more. All right. We're talking about that stone. Acts chapter 4. Let's talk about that stone a little bit. Acts chapter 4. Verse 11 and 12. How many read in there as if where God is my rock? Acts chapter 4. That stone that was hewn down the mountain that came down. It's the one that the builders rejected, but that same has become the head of the corner. Verse 11 says, This is the stone which was set not at you builders, which has become the head of the corner. And neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. He is that stone. Thank God. All right, go with me to Isaiah. Chapter 28, verse 16. Amen. Isaiah 28. Isaiah prophesying here again. And you want to know where God's at? He's in our midst. He's at the head of the church, thank God. We've got to get in the church. People's looking for it to come. It's already come, children. It's not coming in its fullness yet, but it's coming. It started on the day of Pentecost. That's when it began. Isaiah 28, 16, he said, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay where? In Zion. Talk about in the church. For a what? A foundation. How about a stone? How about a tried stone? Amen. A precious cornerstone. And what? A sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. I'll tell you what, I'm glad I know where the corner's at. One place he, Paul said he was a wise master builder, but he said, let everyone that build and take heed how he build. Thank God. Because there's not another foundation, thank God, than the one, Jesus Christ. All right. Let's read a little bit more. Let's go to Matthew chapter 21. Amen. The Lord spoke in parables. But one place he said he spoke in parables to the people because it wasn't meant for them to understand the parables. But he told the disciples, he said, but to you it's given to understand the mysteries of God, thank God. But he gave them the interpretation, the revelation. And tonight, what well, we've been reading here, this 21st verse, we can read about this again. Now, how many believe that the Lord said he came to his own and his own received him not? He came to his Jewish people, his Jewish nation. He came to them and they rejected him. And because he re they rejected him, he chose another nation. He let the Gentiles in. Ain't you glad he let you in tonight? Amen. Amen. But this is a parable, and he said, Hear another parable, verse 7 or 33, now through 44. Hear another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it around about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and led it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Does this sound familiar? And again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But at last, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. And when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him. And let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. And when the Lord thereof of the vineyard cometh, 
what will he do to those husbandmen? As he was asking them a question. And they said unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their due season. Now they judge their own self. And that's what he said. Therefore, say I unto you. Now I'm sorry, verse 42. He said, Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the what? Yes. The head of the corner. And this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. We know Jesus is that cornerstone, don't we? And listen to what he said. And he said, Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Don't you think we need to bring forth fruit? Amen. Amen. And whatsoever shall fall on this stone. Remember what he said about the image? And whatsoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. In other words, it talked about they'd be like the chaff on the summer threshing floor. You know, the wheat is a, is a seed and the, the little husk on it. That's the, that's the chaff. And when they used to, they used to fan it and beat it. And when they'd fan it, the husk would blow away. And the seed is what would remain. In other words, the world and all their kingdoms and all their glory, no matter how great they are, thank God they're never going to stand. God's church is going to stand in the end. He's going to win in the end. I don't say it. I've read the, the lot back of the book and he wins. But you know what? He wins all the way through, brother. Now, all right. Now let's go here. This might give you something to think about. Revelations chapter 21. Anybody got any questions or comments? I'm going to read 2 and 3, 9, 10, and 14. I'm going to jump down through the chapter here. You read it all later. Chapter 21, Revelations 21. Verses 2 and 3, 9, 10, and 14. Now John said, I, John, saw the what? The holy city. What was it called? New Jerusalem. Coming down from God out of heaven. Listen now. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So the church... Must be the bride. Huh? Amen. The new Jerusalem must be the church. All right. Now he says, verse 3. And he said, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, <clears throat> the tabernacle of God is where? With men. Is with men. And he will dwell with them and shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. The tabernacle of God is with men. That's where God's at. His dwelling. Go down to verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows for the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the what? The bride. The bride. Who? The, lamb. the lamb's wife. So I'm not making this up. I'm reading it right out of the book. Unless what he said, remember over what Isaiah said? Now look at this 10th verse. And he carried me away in the what? Spirit. Hey Amen. Don't you like to get carried away in the spirit? Amen. And he carried me away in the spirit, listen to me, to a what? A great high mountain. Remember Isaiah said that mountain will be established in the top of the mountains. He's going to be a rise up above them. And he showed me the what? The great, the great city. The great city and the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. Now we can go on and people talk about heaven 
and everything and about the, you know, I've heard people talk about, man, they, they got catfish up there that long and I, and it's just going to be wonderful and the people that plays golf, they're going to have a big golf course and people that plays music, they're going to have a big band and they're going to have a, but you know what, all of that stuff's all carnal things and even this vision here, thank God, when you begin to study it, this revelation here in chapter 21 about heaven, you find out that it's talking about the church. He said, I have not seen an ear, not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man what God's prepared for them and love and serve. We can't even imagine what it's going to be like. I mean, I couldn't imagine being in a place where there's no pain, where there's no sickness, where there's no hunger. But I'm going to tell you what, God said we're going to have a new body. It's going to be a glorified body. It's, a, it's, going, it's going to be all ours, thank God. And everything that's fought us and beat us down, it's not going to be no more. It's going to be done away. But listen to what he said. I like this part right here. Verse 14. Now it's talking about the, the walls. The New Jerusalem. I think it's 144 feet. I'm not four square. But he went on and he said, uh, And the wall of the city hath what? Twelve foundations. Twelve foundations. And in them the names of the what? Twelve, Twelve apostles of the Lamb. Now this city... It's got 12 foundations, but in that foundation, it's got the 12 names of the 12 apostles. All right, now go with me to Ephesians chapter 2. And I hope you get out of this tonight what I, what I get out of and how, how it just falls together, how God's plan is so perfect, and it's so easy. You know, people make it so hard, but God's plan, thank God, He's a great God tonight. Ephesians chapter 2, I'm going to read 19 through 22. Now remember there's 12 gates to that city. And he said that the names of them, 12 gates was the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. And the foundation had 12, how many? 12 foundations and what was on them? The names of the apostles of the Lamb. Now, we're talking about the church. Now let's go to verse 19, Ephesians 2 and 19. He said, now therefore ye are no more strangers. Ain't you glad? I'm not a stranger no more. And I'm not a foreigner. But what? Fellow, Fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. This is God's church. Listen. And ye are built upon the foundation. How many foundations? Built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Brother, I'll tell you what. God started it off. He was a stone that was hewn out of the mountain. And that stone became a great mountain. And it filled all the earth. It's talking about his church. It's talking about him. Listen, he said. And, this, and he said he's the chief cornerstone. And he said, in whom all the building fitly framed together. Groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. Thank God. And he said, In whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. It's not talking about the hereafter, children. It's talking about, it's talking about the church. Thank God. It began at Pentecost. And, and, and it's God's kingdom come down. It's coming down. It was coming down in my when I was young. It's coming down now. If the, I tell, the Lord tarries, it's going to come down after me. God's kingdom. It's just like God's putting all these pebbles together. He's going to put it all together. One place he said in Malachi chapter 3, he said, In that day, he said, I'll make up my jewels, said the Lord. We're his jewels. You know one place he called us? The apple of his eye. Thank God. He said he, he talked about the bride. He said he had long precious, uh, patience for the precious fruit of the earth. The other night we taught on charity. Thank God how that we're drawing nigh to God. I tell you what, God's going to have a church. The old timers used to say when the church comes to the top of the mountain. This is the mountain that's talking about. Ain't you glad you know what this mountain is? Now I'm going to tell you what organization we're in now. Amen. I believe in organization. I just don't believe in all the stuff men make that. All right, go with me to Hebrews chapter 12. This is our organization right here. Verses 22 and 23. Thank <clears throat> you. 
Hebrews 12, 22 and 23. See, we're no more foreigners or strangers, but we're fellow citizens with, in the household of God. And he said, But ye are come unto the what? Mount Zion. Hebrews 12 22. Everybody with me? But ye are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the what? Living God. Living God to the heavenly what? Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly and church of the firstborn not written in Washington it said was which are written were at in heaven and to God the judge of all and the spirits of just men made perfect that's talking about God's church Amen. Do you see how it was prophesied back here that it was going to come? And when Jesus came, thank God, they rejected him. And he told them, I'm the stone. I'm the rock, thank God. I'm the one, I'm the one that, that was prophesied that I was going to come. He said, Behold, I lay in Zion, a chief cornerstone, a tribe stone, a precious cornerstone. He told us that we build up. Don't you believe tonight we got to build up on him? We got to build up on that corner. That's like that Acts two thirty eight back here. We got to repent. We got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins. Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Go on and live a holy life. Thank God and draw nigh to God. Put on charity. Desire spiritual gifts. God wants us to keep on going. This is not something you just get in. People say, "Oh well, I got saved last night." Amen. But you know what? We're not saved until we made it. Until we made it to the end. The Bible said, He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. I'm glad when people make a start. Maybe if you're under the sound of her voice and you just made a start. Maybe you're just praying. Thank God. God has opened a door for you and a door of others to where you can come in and, and be God's friend and God be your friend and Him be your God and you be His child. And God, the door's open to you tonight. But you have to open up your heart. you got to come in. you got to live for it. Amen. How many loves the Lord tonight? Amen. Do you see this mountain? This is a spiritual thing. It's not a natural thing. I'm not worried about heaven. People say, what are you going to do when we get there? I don't know, but I know God, whatever it is, it's going to be great. Right. Amen. And I, can't go, I ain't going to be able to take nobody with me. And I ain't going to be able to hinder nobody. I'm just going to go. I've got to go for myself. Thank God. That's like you've got to go for yourself. Amen. And this is a personal thing between you and God tonight. And he spoke about this kingdom back there. Now people's looking for this kingdom to come. Some are even teaching that he's going to come here and set the kingdom up over in Jerusalem. And he's going to live in a house for a thousand years. And I want you to know, children, the kingdom's already set up. Do y'all see the scriptures here? Amen. If it's not set up, then, then we don't have no place to escape. There's no place of repentance if it ain't set up. Amen. Anybody else got anything tonight? Brother Johnny, you've got to call me in. Amen. Brother Don. Amen. There in the 21st chapter of Revelation, he said it's a new heaven and a new earth. Where in where in dwelleth righteousness. And I've spoken in the 12th chapter, 11th chapter of Hebrews, where Abraham said he was seeking a city whose builder and maker is God. And I'll tell you what, that's what we're looking That's where we're looking for the peace. You know, that's just like we watch the news and, and we watch the Republicans and the Democrats and we watch all this stuff. And you know what? Everybody wants peace. How many believe that? Everybody wants peace. Even people, thank God, don't know what peace is. They want peace. Thank God. But I'll tell you what, the true peace is Jesus Christ. He's the real peace tonight. If you have him in your life, the world can be crumbling all around you, but you can still have peace. You know, it's just like a friend of mine passed away. And it just seemed like everything. He had everything. I mean, he, he had clout. He, people knew him. He was well known. I mean, he had the awards, all, all kinds of things. But you know what? He still had to die. And I thought, you know, here through this this COVID, 
I mean, everything's probably going good and everything, and this, this sickness come up on him, and it took his life. He wasn't really old. He was in his 70s. And I, I thought about that today, you know, and I just thought how, that, you know, that he was my friend. And, and then I, I watched the tribute, and I seen his family, and I seen his children, his grandchildren. And I think, you know what? His grandchildren ain't going to see him no more. His children ain't going to see him no more, you know. That's just like we see people go, thank God. But you know what? We don't have the promise of tomorrow. Right. That's why the Lord wants us to get in the kingdom today. I want to I wanna read one more scripture. Can you go with me? Let's go to uh, uh, 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. I'm just going to stick this in there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Chapter 15. Uh -huh, chapter 15. I have to look what verse it is. <clears throat> Verse 22. That's where I'm going to start. It's talking about your natural kingdom and your spiritual kingdom. I just want to show you how this spiritually how what God's are trying to show people. He's setting up his church here and we got to get in his church here. And when he comes, he's coming after the church. He's not coming after Bill or Sally or Glenn. He's coming after his church. That's what he's coming after. Yeah. Now I'm going to read it to you. Verse 22 said, As in Adam all die. Talking about the flesh. Even so in Christ shall what? All be made alive. But every man... In his what? His own order. Christ, the first fruits, that was the beginning of the church. And afterward, they that are Christ at his what? Coming. His coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the what? Okay. The kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Now, right now, he said, for he must what? Rain. Rain till he hath put all enemies under his feet. And that's where he's reigning in our lives right now. Amen. And the last enemy we've got to conquer is death itself. And he goes on to say, and the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things... Are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. You know what? We've got to overcome everything. Right down to death. Right down to death. Just like the Lord. He made a way for us. He opened a door for us. Amen. How many loves the Lord tonight? Amen. This is this is this is spiritual book, children. We have the revelation of, of Almighty God. Anybody else got anything tonight? Got anything to say? You can say it, don't brother.